In this part, I would like to talk about the articulation of human rights as national rights. In other words, human rights as rights granted to every human being based on national law. In order to understand human rights as national rights, we should understand first the special characteristics of human rights, which are national rights, universality, equality, inalienability, and indivisibility and interdependence. To begin with, human rights as national rights. This means that people enjoy human rights due to the fact that people are human beings in the light of national law. The consequence of the articulation of human rights as national rights is that even when there exists no positive law recognizing human rights, people still enjoy human rights and the state need to protect such rights. The second character is universality, which means Human rights will apply to everyone and in everywhere they go. And the third character of human rights is equality. So it means that no one is less human than others. So every human being enjoys the same set of human rights with the same contents. And there should be no discriminations based on sex, race, gender, political belief, or any other forms of discrimination at all. However, the characters of universality and equality is not as equal as the notion that there exists no exception or no condition for human rights at all. Now, for example, in some situations, human rights can be remitted, especially when people commit a crime. If a person kills other human beings, they could be sent, sent to jail according to the criminal law and when such a people uh, such a person is sent to jail their freedom of movement is limited and there also exists a condition of exercising certain of having or exercising certain human rights for example even though it's widely understood that right to vote right to vote is a human right. However, it doesn't mean that uh, when we travel abroad as a tourist, we enjoy the right to vote in the election of the country that we just uh, travel to few or four days. However, every human being has the right to vote in the society uh, that they have a close connection to, for example, they have a nationality of that country or have the residence in that country. The first character is inalienability, which means that no one could take away human rights, even by the sovereign power holder of the state. Moreover, we could not give up our human rights to others, so we could not enter into the contact to become a slave to other persons. The last characters 
of human being, uh, sorry, human rights, special character of human rights is indivisibility and interdependence. The idea of in indivisibility means that states are obliged to respect all sets of human rights. They cannot choose to respect one and do not respect or protect uh, the others. And the idea of interdependence means that if one specific human right is affected, others will also be affected because they are interdependent. The obvious example, for example, of, of course, is the right to life. If one is killed, right to life is affected, and then such person could not enjoy other human rights or the right to education is interdependent with the right to work. For example, all right, if we would like to become a lawyer, we need to get a license. And in order to get a license, we need to hold a Bachelor of Law degree. So if we have no access to education, no access to law degree, so we no asset uh, we have no asset to a jobs as a lawyer. Alright. So I think now you might see some connection between the idea of human rights to their special characteristics and the idea of national law. Alright. However, uh I will not spend uh a lot of time talking about, I mean, I will not discuss in details each of five characters, all right? However, I will focus on the idea of human rights as a national rights with uh, effect, directly reflect the connection between human rights and national law that we have discussed in the earlier parts. However, Understanding human rights and national rights will help understand other characteristics, special characteristics of human rights. All right. Mm -hmm. So, according to Kraft, Liard, and Renzo, they say that in the guise of national rights, rights held by people as a matter of national law. And this idea can can be found in the influential 17th and 18th century works of Gautius, Hufendorp, Locke, and Kant. And uh, in this lecture, Kant will play a very important role to understand the idea of human rights and the national, national right. According to Simon, all right, what would claiming that human rights are Natural rights amount to. First of all, of course, so if human rights are national rights, then human rights are necessarily possessed by all human beings. And human rights must be in that rights, which means that rights enjoy from the moment that human life begins begins and the rights cannot be lost. So you can see that uh this is a this reflex the idea of inalienability. Alright. However uh alright so in this case we understand Human rights as a right enjoyed by people because people are human beings. And this is a concept uh, rooted in the national law idea that because we are human beings, so we should be treated with certain sets of rights. There is a question that 
What are the characters or qualification of humans that make human entitled to national rights? All right. What in humanity that make us deserving to be treated differently from other human beings? And this is quite important uh, because. Uh, according to the national law, we have to answer based on the objective to or morality or justice why human being needs to be treated with some respect or why human being are entitled to have certain rights. Just because they are human being, all right. Uh, so I I will resort back to the Kant ideas to answer this question. So according to Kant, every human being has a legitimate claim to respect from his fellow human being, and is is uh and is in turn bound to respect every other. So what is the what is inhumanity or inhuman being that we that make us deserve the respect from Arthur and we are bound to respect other people in return? According to Khan, humanity itself is a dignity. For a human being cannot be used merely as a means by any human being, but must always be used at the same time as an end. However, so what makes us a living being with dignity, but not other living beings? This is a question. So Donnelly tried to explain the concept of dignity proposed by Kant. Uh, by Kant. So Donnelly explained that Kant, his move wants to distinguish two kinds of values which correspond to two sides of human nature. First, it dignity. And according to Kant, dignity is an absolute inner worth. Absolute inner worth. So it is quite important. So dignity, humanity is an absolute worth. And is it inner worth? All right. Uh, why this is important, I will uh, give more elaboration later. All right. Which is the standard of distinctively human or moral values. And then we have the second kind of value, price. The standard of value of the material world and man's animal nature. A human being is a creature, a creature with the worth, a dignity that is literally pious, outside of the domain of instrumental value. All right. So now we know that Kant proposed the two kinds of value, values. Of course, the first one is uh, dignity as an absolute inner worth. And then the value in the material world um, as price, okay. But then, uh, we need to think more about that. What is our um? Uh, what is the absolute inner worth in human being? Normally, there are two which which make a different from other uh living beings, of course. Normally. Two characters that are are often proposed as the special characters of human being that make us distinguish from other living beings such as animals is rationality on one hand and then on the other hand moral ability. But according to Kant, he proposed that uh it's not 
the ability to use reasons of us that make us distinct from animals. Yes, it, it makes us different, but uh, it just has the slight importance. However, moral ability instead that make us different in a significant way from other living beings. So, according to Khan, it is the ability to distinguish what is right and wrong. That is an our absolute inner worth. And with that moral ability, we should be treated as some respect and we enjoy human rights. And then the idea of human dignity as absolute inner worth resound into a very important thesis or test hall, which is an equal moral status. All right. So there is a question, of course, when we link the idea of human rights to the human dignity as an ability to know what is right or wrong. The question is that if someone commit a serious calm, like the leader of some countries that order the soldier to commit genocide, for example, or the person who rape a child, for example, if we think about this situation, we might think that those people lack of moral ability and could be treated not as a living thing with dignity anymore. However, the idea of human dignity as absolute inner worth will kick in and answer this question, provide the answer to, to this question or situation, because uh, the term absolute means that it will not be changed by certain facts or uh, situations. Uh, this means that uh, we believe that even when people commit some crimes, even serious crimes, they still possess this worth. They still possess the inner worth. I mean, they try to, uh, the idea of absolute inner worth, try to shape the human dignity as a potential that even someone commits serious calm, they still have a potential to understand what is right or wrong. And this is absolute character that will not be shamed from the crime that they commit. This may sound too idealistic, however, it prevents us from commit discrimination or treat people differently based on their moral ability, all right? Because in the history of humankind, we have faced the disaster or the tragedy where we treat people based on the claim that uh, treat people inferiorly because we think that they are lacking some moral ability or claim that we know what is right or bad, better than those persons. And or we are the superiorists, for example, in terms of uh, moral ability, for example. So to shaping or to understanding human, human dignity in this uh, sense, it will create the equal moral status of human being that will not be shamed, all right? And this will be ser uh, serve, uh, this will serve as a basic of human rights as an equal rights, okay? All right. So, however, we, we should understand that uh, when people commit a crime, we punish the action, but 
we will not treat them as an inferior human being or inferior being. They still need to be treated with human rights, with respect to their human rights. So, uh, even the serious, uh, the one who commits serious crime and put into the jail, they still enjoy human rights to some extent. All right. Uh, of course, the limitation is based on the fact that they break the law, but they are still human beings like us. Okay. So, if we look back into the those special characters of human rights, you can see a close link between human rights and national law. Of course, the idea of human rights at the national rights is obviously linked to the uh, national law as the foundation of human rights. You know, so Richie, of course, the, when people have a human dignity, so everywhere they go, all right, and every human being, everywhere they go, they should be treated as a human, uh, a, li a living being with dignity, all right, equality. Based on the idea that of equal moral setup that I have explained, people must be treated equally. Okay, that 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 of course that sometimes uh there is a concept of um that we we can treat people differently, but this is to help. All right, the people who are in an in, inferior status or position to to make them en uh, enable, uh, sorry, to make them uh, be able to really enjoy uh, the freedom in the reality. For example, uh, the scholarship that, uh, that, 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 is give, uh, that is given to the people from the inferior background, for example, or the quota to enter into the university for uh, some people that because of the uh not because of their ability but because of their so or uh, social condition that cannot complete fairly with the purple from the normal background for example so in alienability of course when we say that uh human rights is a right we enjoy because we are a human being if an the hum uh the humanity of us cannot be taken away. So if human rights is attached to humanity, all right, uh to be more particular, human dignity, our in uh absolute inner worth, no one can take away from us. And of course, um we could not give our humanity or our human dignity to others. Either, all right, and the idea of indivisibility and interdependence. So this is explained by uh the linkage of this character to national law, uh human rights as a national right is that because because uh if we would like to live in the I mean uh people will be able to live in a dignified life or a life with dignity if and only if all human rights are respected all right so in this case the idea of human rights at the national rights uh rooted in the concept of human dignity also serve as a background for the special characteristics of human rights uh as a uh which are uh, I mean the the special characters of human rights of indivisibility and interdependence, also. All right. So now you, I hope that we can see the articulation of human rights as national rights and the linkage between, of course, human dignity and the human rights, uh, and and. And of course, um, this is quite important because we have to, if we believe that human rights are national rights, we need to answer that what 
in our humanity that make us uh or i mean make us different from other living beings and we should be treated based on national law differently from other animals and the idea of human dignity as absolute universe by Kant can help you to understand uh, the special character in us that is the capacity or potential ability to understand what is right or wrong okay and, and that will help us to explain the special characters of human rights that I have explained so I hope that uh, my video will provide you with some background on human rights and national rights and also for the concept of law, national law and legal positivism. But uh, of course, uh, uh, in the class, uh, I will try to also discuss with you certain points in depth about what have been talked or discussed in this video. However, I would like you to think about one important question, which is if we uh, take human rights as national rights, what is what are the weaknesses and strengths of the idea of human rights as national rights? And if there exists, and of course there, 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 there might exist certain uh, weaknesses of this articulation of human rights as national rights could you come up with some idea how to alleviate or how to solve the weaknesses of the concept of human rights at national rights so i hope you uh find these videos helpful and i look forward to discussing uh the issues relevant to the topic of uh, human rights and national rights are further in the class. So thank you very much for your attention.